Hey, Tony here. For today's October video, I'm going to do an analysis of the movie The Amityville Horror. I'm going to go over the 1979 version and see how it compares to the 2005 version. So on day one of the 31 Days of Horror movies, I watched the original 1979 version of The Amityville Horror. And then on day two, I watched the 2005 version of the Amityville Horror. And I thought it would be a good idea to kind of compare each movie and even let you know which of these two that I prefer. So in 1979, I was 10 years old and I do remember seeing the Amityville Horror in the movie theater and um, just really enjoying it. I always enjoyed horror movies, but for some reason I was really fascinated with this one. I do remember after seeing the movie, that I did go to the library and checked out the book by Jay Anson, um, which the film was based after this book. Um, it was a true life event type story. So I really wanted just to dig into it and read more about it. So um, I do remember actually doing my book report that year. Um, I think I was in the fourth grade um, about the empty of a horror, which is probably pretty odd if the teacher saw that. I don't know what she thought about it. But anyways, I was just really fascinated with the movie. So I've always been a big fan of the original Amityville Horror. So in 2005, when they did the remake, I did not get a chance to see that one in the theater. I don't even remember that it played in a theater near me. But I do remember getting the DVD for it and watching it and just really enjoyed it. It was a different type of telling of the story. So today what I wanted to do is kind of go over the two different versions and maybe let you know which of these I like best. So both stories have some similarities about them, but they are definitely two different types of movies. Um, the first movie in 1979 starred Josh Brolin and Margot Kidder um, as George and Kathy Lutz. They were recently married, and um, Kathy had two sons and a daughter. And I do believe that she probably came um, out of a divorce just by some of the dialogue that was uh, mentioned in the story, but it never was really depicted on what happened to her um, first husband. But we do know that um, James Brolin is the second husband and they were newly married. Um, I enjoy the scene where the real estate agent took them to the house and she was pretty much, um, she was pretty much scared of the house but she did go upstairs with them, showed them around the house, but she was just really anxious to get out of the house. Now, um, during that time, George and Kathy Lutz already knew about what had happened in the house with the murders. So in the 2005 version, we do see George and Kathy Lutz, played by Ryan Reynolds and Melissa George, um, in their home before they actually even went to look at this house. So they were newly married. She had just, um, I guess, recently had lost her husband. And so Ryan Reynolds was her second husband. She has two sons and a daughter also. Now the kids seem to be a little bit older than what the kids in the first movie um, were, but maybe they were about the same age. But anyways, they didn't go to the house right off the bat. So they were just recently married and just starting to try to find them another home, I guess, large enough for their big family. So the real estate agent in the 2005 version took them into the house. Um, they were interested in going down to the basement to see what the basement looked like because um, George Lutz wanted to make his office in the basement. They wanted to look around. She was pretty sketchy with what was going on in the house. She would see shadows and different things happening in the house. Um, George and Kathy Lutz were not aware of anything that had happened in the house. But once they showed interest in it and were ready to make an offer on the house, the real estate agent told them what had happened about the murders in the house. So now they were aware of what was happening. But they went ahead with the sale anyways because they really loved the home. Now both houses and both movies were beautiful homes. They had a boathouse um, with a you know right there on the lake, which was really nice. So I can imagine why they wouldn't fall in love with the house just by the way it looked. Now, both of these movies are based on a true crime event that happened in November 1974, where the Defoe family of six were murdered in their home by the son, Ronald Defoe. Um, the son claimed that he heard voices in the house, which caused him to actually murder his family with a shotgun. Now, both movies do these... Um, tell these stories a little bit differently. We do have the opening scene of the first movie where we can actually see the gunshots happening through the windows of the house. Um, really nice music playing in the background. Really creepy. Nice imagery of the opening title sequence with the red light 
um, shining toward the house. And then in the second 2005 movie, um, it's more depicted in like a newsreel, maybe um, newspaper clippings or whatever, showing each of the different kinds of um, murders and different things that happened in, throughout the trial, I guess. From what I can remember, it wasn't really explained what happened to the son in the first movie, but in the second movie, we do know that he was captured and went to jail. I think he might have actually even turned himself in. Now, the 1979 version um, was two hours long. It had more characters in the movie. You had more of a story plot. You had some priest. You had a nun. You had some work-related friends and different aspects of that throughout the story. You actually had um, Kathy Lutz's brother getting married in the story um, with the babysitter. Now, some comparisons to the 2005 version is that it was mostly focused on the family at the house. You didn't really see too many outside people other than there was a babysitter scene in that one also. So let me kind of describe the two different babysitter scenes. So in the first movie, it was a teenage girl with, I guess, um, some kind of braces type gear on her face for her teeth. She was younger. In the 2005 version, it was a more mature teenager who had actually babysitted for the Defoe family in the past. So she was aware of what murders had happened. So she was actually involved in letting the kids in the house know about the murders that had occurred in the house because they were not aware of it. But in both movies, the first movie, the babysitter gets locked in the closet in the little girl's room and is not able to get out. So she's banging and banging and banging on the door until her knuckles are bleeding and she's just trapped inside that dark closet. In the 2005 version, the babysitter gets stuck in the closet with the daughter and the two sons right there in the room trying to help her get out. In the 2005 version, there's more imagery as far as the ghost or the spirit or whatever it is that's possessing the little girl in the closet. The little girl's name is Jody, and the babysitter's banging and banging on the walls and on the doors trying to get out. So that was two very similar scenes um, handled in two different ways, which I thought was pretty nice. In both films, um, George Lutz is really the one that's possessed by these demons, these spirits, or whatever it is in the house that's causing all of this. Um, you can tell what's going on through his visual um, appearance. His eyes start getting dark. He um, wakes up at 3.15 in the morning every morning. You can see it on the um, clock on the table. And also he's cold and um, he hears noises. In the first movie, um, he hears the beating of a drum. And in the second movie, I think he just hears whispers or something going on throughout the house. But they're always looking out the window toward the boathouse also. Now, in the first movie, there wasn't really much action going on in, in the boathouse um, other than the dog barking. They did have a, um, both movies, they had a family pet, a dog. In the second movie, there was a lot more action going on in the boathouse. Actually, more scenes in the boathouse uh, where there's, um, you can see dead bodies in the water, and um, different occurrences happening in the boathouse. There's, um, in the first movie, the dog, of course, survives the whole tragedy. Um, it's actually a part of the final scene where George goes back in the house to get the dog. Um, in the 2005 version, the family dog is murdered. Um, I won't go into great detail about how that happened, but anyway, that's two, two differences between the movies. And two other differences in the movie. In the 2005 version, um, Jody, the little girl that got murdered by the Defoe brother, um, is visualized in the movie as a spirit, as a ghost. You can actually see her. Um, it's more like jump scares throughout the movie where you can actually see her and the bullet hole in her head. And the two um, in the first movie from 1979, Jody is more depicted as a pig in the window. Very strange looking. Um, usually you just see the red glowing eyes. Kathy Lutz actually saw the um, image of the pig out the window. Um, another jump scare. And then George Lutz looked up at the window from outside and could see a strange image of a pig in the window. So um, the first movie had a pig representing Jody and the second movie actually had the, little, the dead little girl as Jody. 
Now, George Lutz also had a fascination with chopping wood. He was always out there with his um, axe, sharpening the axe, and cutting the wood in both films. Now, the first film just focused more on him um, cutting the wood. In the 2005 version of the film, um, when George Lutz was cutting the wood, he was almost like he was punishing the older son in the family, um, making him help with the wood cutting, making him um, hold the um, the logs to be split, you know, holding holding it with his hands and being very dangerous. So it was more of a punishment for him in the second film. Now, in the first movie, there was more lore on what had happened in the Lutz house. Now, the the family house apparently was built on some kind of sacred Indian burial ground, maybe. I can't remember exactly what the details were, but in both films, it both had something to do with, with the house being built on an Indian burial ground, um, or even where Indians were enslaved um, and tortured. In the first film, in the basement, the dog just keeps scratching and scratching and scratching at the basement wall until finally the dog's paws bleed, and um, we come to find out that behind that wall is a red room. So whenever um, they broke that wall down, you could actually see the red glowing light coming from the room, which is pretty scary looking. In the second film, um, in the 2005 version, when Ryan Reynolds actually gets through the wall, he actually was able to go into the wall, walk down a hallway, he sees these um, dead bodies, maybe um, possessed bodies, ghostly bodies, um, until he gets to the end of the hallway and opens a room where this man is. Now, I can't really exactly remember what the man was called, but apparently this is the man that was torturing these Indians. And so um, the man, for whatever reason, I can't remember exactly what happened, but he just started spewing blood everywhere until Ryan Reynolds was covered completely in um, blood splatter. Now, two other differences between both films is the first movie really focused on the priest that came to bless the house. Um, when the priest came in, the Lutz family were outside, and so he went on into the house. He heard some noises upstairs, so he went upstairs into a bedroom. Um, I think when he touched the doorknob, he his hand got blistered. You can see the blisters welling up on his hand. He got violently sick. You could see flies on his face, flies on the windowsill and um, he heard a voice saying, get out, and then he heard it again louder say, get out. So the priest finally got out of the house and was pretty much violently sick throughout the rest of the movie. Now, um, in the first film, it really focused a lot on the priest and the other priest in the film. And like I said, there was um, Kathy's aunt was a, a, a nun who came to the house and she got violently sick also. So anything to do with religion wasn't welcome into that house. Um, even the priest that came to bless the house that was sick eventually became blind. So anything that had to do with that priest was always pretty bad. Um, him and the other priest went to come back to the house and the car um, went out of control like something was um, possessing the car to where they ran off the road. So those two priests um, pretty much never came back to the house. Now, in the second film, there wasn't very much mention of the priest up until maybe the last um, final hour of the movie or the last final 30 minutes of the movie. We were introduced to a priest that Kathy got in touch with, um, but it wasn't as heavily involved in the second film as it was the first. Now, the final act of each film was a little bit different. In the first film, we had the blood coming out of the walls. We had blood coming out of the stairway. We had some kind of black tar coming up out of the, um, the toilet, maybe the sink also. And we had George going down into the basement to where he actually fell through the basement stairs into a pit of black tar looking stuff. Um, at this point, the rest of the family was getting out of the house and the dog actually saved George and helped him get out of that tar pit and got um, George out of the house. So by the time George got out of the house and got the family in the truck to get to get away, um, they had forgotten the dog in the house, so he went back to save the dog. Now in the second film for the final act, um, Brian Reynolds' character for, for George was pretty well just berserk. Um, you had the kids escaping, you had actually the whole family escaping from the upstairs bedroom window. They got on top of the house, and George went after them and was shooting at them 
with the shotgun. Um, and finally they got out of the house, got off of the roof and got onto the ground to where um, George was actually there almost ready to, to kill Kathy until she um, hit him over the head with the end of the shotgun and they were able to um, get out of that area. But instead of her actually wanting to kill George, she wanted to get him away from the house. So they knocked him out with the shotgun handle and drug him to the boat and they got on the boat and got away as far away from the house as they possibly could. The further away they got from the house, the better um, George would become. So those are the two different endings of each of the movies. So which film do I like the best? Well, the one that I like the best would be the 1979 version. I just like the idea of the way um, it was presented, the way it looked, the, the music that was played during it. It was more of an evil type movie. I would almost compare it a little bit to The Exorcist, the way The Exorcist made me feel. Um, but I do not dislike the 2005 version. The 2005 version was okay for what it was. It's more, um, it was more, I guess, geared toward modern day horror. You know, more jump scares, more seeing the ghost, more seeing the dead people. Um, all those things were pretty much put in your face instead of you trying to imagine it um, like you would in the 1979 version. As far as the acting, I do think that the child actors and the adult actors in the first one, um, I think they did a little bit better of a job than they did in the 2005 um, version. Now, I do like the 2005 version just for what it is. It was fun to revisit the story, see a little bit of a different tale of it. Um, it was more bloody and gory, I think. But to me, I think the more horror elements um, lied in the 1979 version. So 1979 is still my favorite version of the film. Now, if you've seen both of these films, please leave me a comment below. Let me know which of these two films that you prefer. Let me know what your memories are of your first viewing of the 1979 version and what you think about the 2005 version because I really do like seeing what you think about these movies. Now, I do hope to do more of these types of um, movie analysis throughout the month of October. Please leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think about this type of analysis. If you'd like to see me do more of these, I'd be happy to do more of these during the month of October. I'm not the best um, speaker. I'm not the best one to present plots and storylines, but I'll try my best to, to give you what you want. If you like what you saw here today, please give it a thumbs up and share the video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd really appreciate it if you would subscribe. If you do subscribe, please remember to hit that notification bell so that you can be notified every time I upload a new video. If you haven't found me on my social media accounts, I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and on TikTok. And if you'd like to find out what I've been watching, you can find me over on Letterboxd. I do have links below. But thanks again for watching, and we will see you next time.